Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. This is my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm showing you the Oddball Blanket today. This is a brand new design. This is actually by me but it's actually an adaptation of existing patterns from Yarnspirations.com. Because I am related to them in the sponsorship I'm able to just adjust a few things. So what we have here is the daisy stitch that you see. It consists of two rows. There's an underside and an overside. But the actual fact this is a morphing of what is really in trend for spring 2021 because in the stitch along with our friends at Joanne we did the puff daisy stitch and then that morphed into another stitch which I'll show you in just a few mo moments and then it's morphing into this. So you can see how they're all related to each other. So here in the Joanne stitch along we have the puff daisy stitch that was used in the very center of the blanket. So you can see that there was a puff and then you see that there was a wave up and down. So what we have done in this particular example is that the wave up and down has been eliminated out in what I have created in behind here. But there's also something else that's been eliminated is that the space in between. So it's been jammed. So the ones that are on the outside of one section and the outside of another has been put together so they're sharing the same um, stitch. But the stitch has also been changed. So instead of using these puff stitches we're just using the treble crochet. But it also morphed in another way here on the stitch log. Let me show you that part. So it morphed again and what we have here is that we have the daisy stitch but then you can see that there's the lower and then the upper basically what we're going to be doing today. But I changed the stitch to being a treble. So what I've done is that I've eliminated out this particular section completely out and as I mentioned the one side here and there has been sharing so it's basically been jammed together. So once we did this uh, stitch along the designer went further on and went on to develop something else which I'll show you in just a second. <laughs> So last week I filmed this thing and I was really quite excited. So here is the daisy stitch that you see. As I mentioned they've been jammed together so that the one petal is joining. So this petal could either be for here or here and you see that they're sandwiched together. So the spacing in between of them is now eliminated out. I love this so much that I wondered what it would look like if this section was actually removed. And so what I did is I did a slight alteration to it and I decided to just concentrate on this daisy stitch work in order to have it just combine up. But I also had another problem here in my studio is that I have all these oddballs that I don't know what to do with. So let's talk about the oddballs which is the name of the blanket that's in behind. So introducing the oddball blanket and I have many problems in my life but this is one of them for sure but it's, it's a first world problem is that I end up buying yarn and then I end up with just an oddball left over that I cannot match it with anything. So when I think about doing a blanket I want three of the same color, three of, a, of, a, of the different color but it's the same and so that I can mix things up. So on my shelf I have all these oddballs that actually don't work together at all. So my point being is that I just looked at the balls and I found the color blue as a commonality. So what I did is that I picked out four balls that are solids. You can see those here and then four balls that are variegated but also match the solids in some way. So blue is my common denominator. So you can see blue here, blue here, blue here and the, this cream here matched these other three. So that's how I came up with the color. So I ended up using eight balls altogether. Now you're going to find here with the Bernat blanket if you decide to use this is that you can't go much more wider than what I've suggested. So we have 95 chains to start. You can probably do 103 what I'm suggesting but you can't do much more than this. The balls that are left are just about a handful size. There's not a lot of yarn left over when you have this. But I'd rather have this amount of yarn left over than all these odd balls that I know what to do with. And of course if you want to mix and match your colors that's up to you. So the oddball blanket is made a, uh, being made up of stripes which is the daisy stitch. So what you're looking at in this blanket is that you can do four rows comfortably with one ball of this Bernat blanket yarn. So each one of these stripes are made up of a row across and then a row back and then that was it. So then I can do it one more time in the project and then the ball ends up to being this size. So because this yarn is using, we're using a trebles, the yarn itself will absorb really quickly because of the trebles. So each one of these stripes is actually three inches tall. So while it feels longer to go across and back you are growing the afghan much more uh, taller 
in just one pass. And so this project will go pretty quickly. So I started this on Friday night and I finished it on uh, just uh, just Sunday uh, evening, early evening I should say. But I wasn't manically working on it all weekend so I was able to pick it up and then put it down. So you end up with all this but I know that some of you don't prefer to work with Bernat Blanket but these are the balls that take up the most space in my house. So I really wanted to concentrate on that. But what I've done is that I figured it out just in case you wanna use the worsted yarn which I'll be demonstrating today. On page number two you're going to notice is that if you would like to change it to the medium weight. So you can use the medium weight. So if you chain 147 using a five millimeter hook which is what's in my hand you can get about to 48 inches wide. Now I, I can't tell you how much yarn you're gonna use because I didn't crochet my sample with that. But my point being is that if you have odd balls you can do this concept pretty easily. So if th this means that every three chains is approximately one inch if you would like to do that. So if you would like to do a 60 inch standard width throw 60 times three chains equals 180 and 180 and 80 is divisible by four so that works. So to start this one in order to maintain the stitch count to change the size it's going to be 183. So the stitch multiple to change the size of this project is multiples of four plus three. So you chain four, 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 four when you're happy with it add the th uh, three extra chains and then you will have a balance. So you're going to notice that I did this because this matched the concept that uh, Aaron did on the original sample. Sorry, I assume Aaron did it. But here's what I would like to show you. On the original here on the garden flowers that we did last week I just thought this was so handy to have this right where you see it here. And so then what I decided is that I added it to my own here. So even though I do I drew the diagram stuff on my own you can see that I thought it was pretty helpful to put that side by side because what I've done for you is that we've provided you well we meaning me has provided you with the diagram. So let's take a look at that. So on the Garden Flowers Crochet Blanket you will notice that this stitch work here. I changed this ever so slightly that you barely will notice because it's in the description which I'll talk about in today's tutorial. So you're going to notice that it's pretty much the same because mine and that I drew it myself is showing right here. So what we're going to do is that we'll get started with the double crochet across and then we'll start. So you're just gonna start the first two but in written instructions in order to have a nice like easy repeat in order to do that comfortably I have to say that do rows number four and five over and over and over. So I'm going to cycle through my colors. So I have eight colors. I used one ball of every color. So I used one color for this and then this whole section is one color. This is another uh, color and I keep adding that over and over. So with eight balls doing these stripes, right, I did those striping twice before I could almost run out of yarn. So you're just gonna be able to cycle through until you see about 16 strips on the blanket. Now if you don't know what that means is that when you looked at the sample here you can see a strip. So that's consisting of four and five. And then there's another strip. So you'll see a total of 16 of those when you're doing that. So I just have it so that you can see where things are need to go and you keep just repeating over and over. And then the final edge is just double crochet back in and then we're just gonna do some uh, weaving in at the end. So like front post, back post. And then you need to turn it around and do uh, front post, back post here. So I've turned this, see this? I just turned it upside down and so you're just gonna add on to the stitch work and just be paying attention to what sides that you need to begin on. So we're going to begin that today and uh, the instructions are on page number two and uh, page number two. Sorry about the long intro. There, the instructions are right here and you can see everything has been written. Now you can see that I made a mistake. So let's talk about that mistake because usually I wouldn't tell you that. So here in the sample I made a mistake and I did not notice until I weaved in all the ends and I put it down. I'm like what is going on? So after the sea foam here I must have ended the row too soon and therefore I axed out one of these daisy shapes. So you can see how it started to pull in and then that was it. So even though I maintained it after that I went wrong right here. So my word of caution to you is just keep an eye on the edge. I just check it once in a while to make sure that you do have everything. It should be flat like this side. So you, normally I wouldn't tell you that but in this case I think this could happen to you so I might as well just tell you. So without further ado I'm going to just demonstrate with Karen one pound using a five millimeter hook. This was using a Bernat blanket with an L or an eight millimeter size hook. So let's officially begin. 
So let's begin. If you're using Bernat Blanket just chain 95. Um, if you'd like to change the size remember it's in multiples of 4 plus 3 and in the medium weight for the 48 inch wide it is 147. So you decide which direction you would like to go. So you just have to chain if you're doing the multiples of 4 plus 3. So just chain 1, 2, 3, 4 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 and if you say you're happy with that just add 3, 1, 2, 3 and then you're officially ready for row number 1. So just do your complete uh, chain across. I'll see you back here in just a moment. So let's begin row number 1. I'm gonna give you two sets of advice. If you are using the, the uh, medium weight number 4 you, you have to go 4 chain from the hook. You have to do that with burnout blanket but let me explain. So 1, 2, 3, and 4 and you turn it over and get the back hump of the chain and you work on the back hump of the chain all the way across just with double crochet. The problem with Bernat Blanket because it's so thick if you do that it's gonna create a gapping space for you. So when you do the Bernat Blanket style 1, 2, 3, 4 just still go to the fourth but make sure there's two strands from a chain sitting on top and then that will keep it closed. You can always do that with your medium weight as well but it's just a way of making it look better. So either way you do it make sure that you go all the way across with just a double crochet in each of the chains and this is row number one and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So it came all the way across. So we're gonna end this color right where we have so I'm gonna maintain the pattern as far as coloring is concerned and all you're just going to do is just uh, bring, break this and weave it in. Now what I would strongly recommend is get a tapestry needle especially with the Bernat Blanket and what you want to do is just hide in your loose ends. So turning it to the back side and just gliding the yarn up underneath the stitch work. So inside. So don't interfere with that outside edge at all. Like outside. And all you're just gonna do is weave in your ends going back and forth a total of three times. Make sure you go a little bit of a distance especially with Bernat Blanket. And it should weave to the point where it knots onto itself and should never fall out on you even if you're washing it. So continue to do that. So this is the fastening off technique and then we're going to continue. So this is where we ended. So turn your work and we're gonna get ready for row number two and we're gonna begin a new color here. So let's begin row number two. I'm going to start with a slip knot on the hook and I'm gonna come into the very first stitch and slide it in and attach. So just yarning over, pulling it through to attach. Now we're going to chain four which will count as a treble. So one, two, three and four. And we're going to treble in the next two. So put this down on top of the line so it gets stuck underneath and you still will use a tapestry needle to hide it in later. But to treble is to wrap the hook twice and then just pull through, pull through two, two and two. Then do the next one. So you're gonna treble the first two like that. So you have a total of three in a row and you'll have three in a row on the other side of your project as well. So let's begin to slowly go across. So we have to do the puff stitch or the, the trebles so that they're lying sideways to reach on over. To do that first right where you're sitting you're going to chain four. So one, two, three and four. And do you see this little hole right there? That's gonna be where you're gonna concentrate the next section. So you're gonna wrap the hook twice and you're gonna go into that hole and you're gonna go in, pull through, pull through two and two and you're gonna leave that on your hook. Then you're gonna do that again. So wrap twice and you're gonna go in and pull through, pull through two and two and hold. So you're gonna have a set of nine of these loops all together. So here's the first three. So right where the other one is already joining right here that's where you're gonna go next. So you wrap twice and then you go into that hole. So I would put the straggler still on top of the line so that it helps get stuck underneath and going in pull through, pull through two and two and hold. And you'll do that two more times there. So you are gathering up your stitches. Okay, so now you have a total of six. So you have to have a total of nine I said. So you have to come back to the line and you have to skip three stitches. So one, two, three and go to the fourth. And that's where your next section like this is gonna go in. So wrapping twice 
and go to the fourth one away, pull through, pull through two and two and hold and then do it two more times in that same spot. And you will end up with nine. Now on the Bernat blanket it's if you have an ergonomic hook like I normally do it's gonna be a bit of a jam to get it on but it's not impossible. So I never had an issue. So now you have, have nine here so I want you to pull yarn over pull through all nine and then chain one to lock it. And so then you end up with the center hole and so what part of the daisy is missing? The outside one right here right? So you have this one, two, three. You need four. So to do the next daisy, uh, the next petal sorry, you're gonna chain four. So one, two, three and four. And you will notice, remember when we did this? This is the start of a repeat. So if I chain four this is the start of a repeat. So you're gonna yarn over and go into the center hole. So instead of going into the side of the stitch that it was, we now have the center holes to work with. And that's where we're gonna place the first set. So you're gonna yarn over. So a, a typical mistake you could do is that you yarn over and do it three times. But remember that chain four already counts as one of them. So you have three loops before you can move on. So the next one is right where this one is sitting. It's in the exact same stitch. So yarning over twice and then coming in, pull through, pull through two and two and hold. And do that a total of three times. So you see they're sharing the stitch. So now we have six loops on the hook. We need nine. So we're gonna skip one, two, three, go to the fourth and that's gonna be where the last one is gonna be for this group. And that's all you're gonna do going all the way across. Okay and then you pull through and chain one to lock and what are you missing? You're missing this piece right? So it's a start of another repeat. So one, two, three and four and then you do it twice which gives you your three loops that you need. Then you come down and you do the one that is in the same one of this last one. Okay, so there you see six loops. Now you skip two, uh, three, so one, two, three, go to the fourth. And that's where you're gonna put another set. And you're going to notice that that one, because we're coming close to the edge, so you're just gonna keep on repeating over and over and over until you get close to the edge like I am. And you see your nine, so you're gonna pull through all nine. You're gonna chain one to lock and you're near the end. So you have to finish off so you have these cross petals. So you're just gonna do the last one, one, two, three, four. And so you're just gonna put in your two into the center here. Just like you see there. And then you're just gonna pull through and you're going to double crochet into the same one of the last one. They share the same stitch. Sorry, did I say double crochet? You got a, a treble crochet. So you wrap twice and then you uh, treble the last two that are left. And come into the turning chain. And so then that's what it would look like. So when you're looking across, if you accidentally skip the chain four, which I did a few times, is that you will see that it's not as solid. So you want to make it look like all the tops look solid like that. So we're gonna turn our work and do row number three. In row number three, we're gonna do the top half of the, of the daisy stitch. So to start, we're going to chain a total of four. So one, two, three, four. And we're going to treble into the next one. So the next treble, and the next stitch that looks like this is gonna share the same top. So what you wanna do is that once you begin, you wanna start your, your third treble, which is right here. So this is one and two. Start your third treble but don't finish it. So pull through two and two and hold. And your petal is going to go into the center point. 
So you're just gonna wrap twice and go right to the center point and put your group of three in there. So pull through two and two and do it a total of three times once again. So you're secretly looking, well not so secretly whatever, but you're looking for five loops in the hook and you know you're done. So yarn over and chain one to lock. That, that's not in the original that was in that flower blank that I showed you. So I chained one to lock and then chain three. So one, two, three and then you begin to work your way all the way across. So the edging is slightly different from everything else in between. So in between we're going to do the petal work from this side to this side. So to start we've already chained three so we're gonna just wrap the hook twice coming into the center of the last one that we were just in and pull through and put through your little group of three in there. So you're collecting stitches. So after you've done the first one here you'll notice that there's four loops on the hook. So you wanna reach over to the next one and start the next one there. So wrap twice and this will pull on over. Okay, so the top is much easier. So you're looking for the total number of seven. So yarn over, pull through all of it, chain one to lock it and then chain three. So one, two, three and you keep repeating what I just showed you right here. So let's do it again. So the only time it's different is on the first one that you're starting with and the last one that you finish with. So there's the first half and you're gonna come into the next one and add it together. And how many loops are you looking for? It's seven. So once you have your seven, pull through, chain one to lock and then you're going to chain three. So one, two, three. So you're gonna do that all the way across but eventually the party will end and you need to come to the other side. So to finish the very last one and this is where I think that I might have messed up it, um, on my pattern is that I may have shorted myself too early. Okay so I pulled that, that through there but I'm missing one more stitch. I need the, the next treble to be included with it so it'll pull it together. So yarn, yarn over twice. Come over to see where this is part of it and put that as a treble so pull through two and two and so you're gonna pull through all five loops, chain one to lock and then you have two trebles left. And this is where the color will end so unless you don't want it to but this is gonna be one full daisy stitch that you see here. And you see they share each other and they have texture. Okay so I'm gonna just fasten this off. I'm gonna bring on a different color and then we'll start then rows four and five which is the repeat for everything. So this is where I finished it. So I wanna turn my work and begin row number four. So I'm just gonna start with the same color as the gold cause it's here on the desk. And I wanna come into the top of the last treble and I wanna just join it and then pull th uh, chain four. So one, two, three, four. So that's your first treble. So you're going to treble into the next one and then you're going to treble into the next eye right here. That was that chain one that we locked it with. Okay so there is your first three like you had before. Now you're gonna play within the side of this stitch. So you're gonna start and chain four. So one, two, three, four and coming into the side of that same stitch you're gonna put your first set in. It's like you did before. So you're gathering stitches. So this is the underside of the daisy stitch. So once you have your three you can move on. The next stitch is right in the eye of this petal which is the same one that that's joining into. So you wrap twice and you'll put in a group there. Think about everything in groups of three. Then you're gonna come into the top of the eye where those two are joined together. So instead of skipping the three remember we did down here we're just looking to the eye of the next daisy. 
So you'll put in your group of three here. And how many loops do you need to have? Nine. So there's nine there. Yarn over, pull through all nine and then yarn over or to pull through as a chain one to lock. And then you're gonna begin again. So you just start on the side here. So one, two, three, four. And now that you're started, you come into the eye of what you just created and then you put in your group of three in there. Remember that chain of four is counted as one of them. Okay, so one, two, three. And then you start into the same one to where it's coming into. You just pulled out my tail. I didn't use a tapestry needle. I was too lazy to see what happens. Mm -hmm. Cutting the system. So I wanna put a group of three there too. Okay, I need to calm down. <laughs> oh my. Okay, so now I got my six and now the next one is in the eye of the next one right over here. So on the Bernat blanket, each one of these daisy um, petals or each one of the daisy uh, stitches itself is actually equal to three inches tall. Like when you go across and back. So they grow pretty quickly even with this variegated yarn or even with this medium weight yarn, like that's, a, that's a, about a two inch difference. Okay, so we have our nine loops, pull through all nine, chain one to lock and then begin again. So chain four and then just coming back into the same eye and start gathering. Okay, we gather into the same one down here. It almost reminds me of the star stitch, how you use existing stitches that are already in play just to expand it sideways. Once you have that one done, you come to the eye of the next. Okay, and you have your nine again. So you pull through all nine, chain one to lock. So you're gonna go over and over and over and then eventually hit the edge. So we need to create one more of these before we're done. So chain four and just do a group. And once you have your three, just yarn over, pull through all three and then see right where we are. Okay, so this is where I probably screwed up on the original sample. So I wanna come into the top of this, this stitch right here. And then the, the rest of the other two that are left. And that concludes off row number four. So your edging should stay flat each and every time. So I'm going to move on to number four which is the repeat of what we already know but just for tutorial reasons just to keep it going. It's exactly what you already know from before. So we're doing the top half of the daisy. So the daisy consists of six petals. So you one, two, three, four is in the bottom half. Only two is on the top. So let's begin. So just chain four and then put a treble in each of the next two. But remember that the second treble that you're going to put in, which I'm about to do, you're not gonna finish it. It has to join the first petal. So you just pull through two and two and hold it. Come into the center of the petal, wrap twice and do a group of three. And you're gonna continue with what you already know. And once you see your five loops, you're done. Yarn over, pull through all five, chain one to lock and then chain three to go on. So one, two, three. So now we're gonna do all the rest of the same stitch work across. So you're gonna match this one that we were just in and to a new one at the same time. So right to the one that we were just in, do a group of three. Okay, and then come into the one that we were just, that is coming up next, sorry. And so you can see that there's a total of seven loops. Pull through everything, chain one to lock it and then chain three to move on. 
Okay, so that's what it's gonna look like all the way across until you get to the last one where it's slightly different. Okay, so that's the next one and then just reach on over, grab another one. And then pull through all seven. Chain one to lock and then chain three to move on and because we're now hitting the edge which you will eventually there's only one piece to do so you're just gonna come into the one that has already been done. You're gonna put in a group of three but do not forget that the first treble and this whole group has to come together. So if you pull it apart you see the first, second and third. You see that? That's where you need to go. So yarn over twice, pull through two and two and then yarning over pulling it through all five and chain one to lock and then do the other final two trebles. So you're going to repeat then four and five so I'm just gonna go back to the diagram now and we'll talk about it and then I'll show you how to finish off the end. Pretty cool right? So back to the diagram we go. We're going to repeat then rows four and five and we just keep changing the colors. So if you're doing the oddball sequence you can just grab another color and then do a four and five in a different color and then do another four and five in a different color and you can keep circulating. So each one of these rows four and five is one color. So then four and five of another time is another color. That's up to you on how you would like it to work out for you. So in the Bernat blanket you'll only be able to do two stripes in order to be able to use most of the yarn on the balls. So if you're using a, this other worsted weight, I don't know how much yarn you're gonna do but you can see that it's substantial striping technique in order to make that happen and I think it's pretty awesome and it's slightly textured as well. But eventually the party will run out and then you can start your edge row. So in the edge row, let's talk about that next. So when we look at the edge row, the edge row here is going to get it back into balance so that it's very similar to the very beginning on how we started with. The difference is, you see this is row edge number one. It's see how that this matches this. This means that when we go to start this particular one, we have to watch out for the right side of the project. So when you go to finish the striping, you don't finish the striping here and then turn it around and begin all over again. You have to start on the same side of where the last row was. Okay, so this is where I finished this so I have to start over here. So this is the right side of the work. So you'll notice that, that see how the chains are on the same side? That's intentional so that it will stay balanced. And so what we're going to do is that we're gonna slam in a double crochet into each one of these stitches and then when there is a chain three space we're going to put in three double crochet and that will bring you back in balance for that. So it's really quite simple when you're going to look at that. Then we're gonna turn a row and do like a weaving row. So it'll be front post back or double crochet front post, double crochet back post and we're gonna keep alternating and then that's done. Now in the Bernat blanket what I did is that I used the same color in order to do that. I had enough on my ball to be able to do that and uh, for this first one and then I used a different color that I had left over from a different ball to do this technique. Once you're, once we have this done we're gonna turn the blanket around just like you see here and then we're going to begin. So you, we're gonna turn it around and work on this side. So this here has already been turned. That's why it's upside down. See that? So what we're going to do is that you'll start on the wrong side of this one to have the balance and you'll put in this front post, back post you going around these posts that you see just going up and over the chain that you have. Let's begin the edge row number one as if we're doing the one side and then I'll come back and show you this one on the other side. So let's begin. I don't mean to be so mouthy on this one. This one's, uh, I'm using a lot of words. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna use all my words for the week. So you're gonna just come up to the top of the first one. So this is the right side of the work. I can tell this because this is finished on, and if I turn it then I'll be on the wrong side. So I wanna start on the same side that the chain is existing from the row below. And you're just gonna join it and chain three. That'll count as your first double. So you're gonna double crochet in each of the stitches going across. Remember that this piece here and this uh, treble shares the same top. So there's only one there. And then in each chain three space you're going to put in three double crochet. Okay, 
just like that and then keep on moving on. So you have to go into this cluster and then you're back into a chain three space again. So put three double crochet and you're gonna do that all the way across. So you just have to watch that special stitch at the beginning and at the end. Okay and then do the cluster and so then that shares the same one as this treble and then you'll do the last two. And then I officially ended that color on the sample itself which I'll do just for clarity. And so then that brings you back into balance like it does on the other side. Okay so let's just trim our yarn and I'll move on and I'll show you the row number two of this side. Okay I just uh, finished off this side so I'm gonna turn my work. I just weaved it in and we're back here. And we're gonna come into the beginning one. So the beginning one we're gonna chain two which will not count as a stitch. It's just a builder. So one and two and you're gonna half double crochet in that same beginning one to finish that off. And then you're gonna start with your first one. So go around as a front post double crochet. So wrap the hook coming in through the front side. Pull through, pull through two and two and the next one will be on the back. So wrap the hook coming from the back. So it's a double crochet back post. And then a front post and you're gonna alternate this all the way across. Okay so it's front post, back post, front post, back post and you'll do that all the way across and then the very last stitch that you run into will be a half double crochet and I'll see you there in a moment. And on the very last one here you're just gonna half double crochet into the chain. And then that's it and that's when you're gonna weave in your ends. So now we're gonna start the other side of the border. Okay, the, we don't do anything along the sides unless you want to but I didn't. So what you need to do is that you need to turn to the wrong side of this. And so you're just gonna look back here. This is the right side of the work. I can tell that from experience. And what I want to do is start on the wrong side. So just turning it around and this is the back side. I can tell that. You probably can too if you're experienced. And we're going to join then the yarn again. And so this is the beginning chain and we're gonna play around that. So we're gonna start with the beginning and join it and chain two doesn't count as anything and half double crochet in the first one. And like you did with the other side, start with the front post double crochet. So just going right over there and then just go around the back. So a back post double crochet. So I don't need to show you too much more than that. You're just gonna go around those and this is front post, back post, front post, back post until you get to the very end and your very last stitch then will be then a half double crochet. So just keep alternating and I'll see you at the end of this row. So once you get to the very last one you're just gonna half double crochet and then that's it. You're gonna weave off your ends. I've shown you how to go weave in and out back and forth. So about three times. So you're gonna wanna do that with your tails that you have and so this is the front side of the work here and you can see it looks really neat. It's a really neat idea and you can blast through a lot of height with this particular stitch. This is a daisy stitch and this is the oddball blanket and hopefully you enjoy today and I hope to see your creativity online. I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at yarnspirations.com. Bye bye.